So let's just uh, try an example in MATLAB. So let's make a uh, very stiff system. Remember last time we constructed constructed a stiff system by playing with two eigenvalues, by, by looking at a matrix with two very different eigenvalues. Right, today let's actually make one that is even more blazingly obvious than last time. So let's make a, a, a matrix. Actually, let's, let's actually code up a function. We code up a function called DDT stiff. Okay, and in DDT stiff, let's make a matrix a oops not control a a is equal to minus one that is the slow eigenvalue zero zero and I want a fast eigenvalue give me a number minus 400 minus 400 you are very mild okay let's do that uh, so the resulting DUDT, so let me say the output is DUDT, the input is time, which we don't need. So in MATLAB, whenever you don't need something, you put this. If you put T, it'll give you a warning. Okay, DUDT is equal to A times U. <laughs> it shows the T being colored because I didn't use the variable. So I usually make whatever I don't use to be a tilde. So it doesn't give me a yellow warning. All right, so so then you wrap this function in OD45, let's say. OD45, so OD45 is an explicit solver. So if DDT is stiff, T span, let's just solve from zero to one. And uh, uh, Y0, let's just give it uh, uh, one and one, okay? And look at what it does. It uses pretty small time steps, right? So. So you see, the very fast time scale gets to equilibrium very, very fast. That's the second dimension. Oh, the first one takes its time. And let's increase the stiffness even further, right? And uh, must imagine. let's put three more zeros <laughs> and uh, see what OD45 does. Oh boy. So that's the. My computer is running full force right on this one, and it's integrating very, very slowly. So that's the problem with uh, explicit time integration schemes. Basically, the delta t it is using is dictated by the stability of the second mode. But what I'm really interested in may be how slow this guy decays. All right. So that's uh, the limitation of uh, uh, explicit time integration scheme. All right. Now let's, uh, uh, should we kill it? Sorry. Yeah. It's what, is it? what is the blue line and what is the orange line? Oh, yeah, if you just uh, use OD45 without any uh, return values, it'll just uh, plot the states. So it'll oh. plot the time history of the first state and the second state. And uh, if you look at our equation, uh, our equation is basically, our equation is, come on, uh, let's kill the MATLAB, it's uh, killing my machine. Okay, I think it's done. I think it's done. Okay, we are solving. We are solving du one dt equal to minus u one du two dt equal to minus four hundred thousand u two, right? Or written in a matrix way, you are solving this. You are solving that. So that's what we coded up in MATLAB. So now let's switch to a uh, implicit solver. Let's close the figure. What's your most uh, uh, favorite implicit solver? Anybody used anything? 23s. 23s. That's a pretty good one. Down. Okay. 15s is good. 15s is also good, right? So, so you, you can see here like how big of a time step it is using, right? Initially, it is using small time steps to to make sure this dimension is solved accurately, but then it is switching to a, uh, this is because the time step size is di dictated by accuracy, right? But nowadays, uh, later on, the second dimension is already zero, so it can use much smaller time step to get the same, uh, much larger time step to get the same accuracy, right? So you want me to try uh, 
one five. What? Or I think yeah, I think one five has an S version. Yeah, one five has an S version. Same thing, right? Works. So, and uh, if you try one of these uh, non-stiff ones, uh, like uh, I think the one you found out was uh, oh. this one, it's oh, no. it's it's probably even slower than OD45. Yeah. All right. So let's close it. Uh, I hope I can control. Yeah, I can control C it. Pretty good. Okay. So that's uh, uh that's yes. I was just going to ask, is there any system to the numbering? Like, is ODE 4-5 the 4-5 Ranjukuda, or is yes. it just like arbitrary? It's 4-5 Ranjukuda, and 1-1-3, I think you looked it up, uh, it uh, varies between a first order and uh, 13th order, order. scheme. <laughs> and yes. it will just pick it based on its internal tolerances? Yeah, it's got like a weird, it's like a really complicated like variable thing. I don't understand exactly what algorithm it uses. But like I think it runs all the way up to thirteenth order on every like on every time step. So uh, oh, okay. So I think uh, in the documentation, if you doc ODE one one five, one one three, it says that uh, it varies between a first order and thirteenth order scheme depending on the tolerance you set, right? So right. so when you are uh, using an ODE solver, you can have the option of setting a tolerance. So once it decides the accuracy, it missed the tolerance, it wouldn't uh, go any further in the accuracy. Yeah, so have. it like, starts with the first order, then goes to the second order, and keeps going until it gets within your tolerance? Probably, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah, is there a way to know before trying each one of them which one is working well for a problem to be known, for example, the set problem? Right, so so that's actually what we want to discuss. And uh, first, uh, we have just uh, showed the difference between implicit and explicit solvers, right? Implicit basically wins big time for any system that are stiff. If if you use if you don't have any stiff system, let's say minus four, uh, it'll be pretty much the same. If you use one 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 three, it'll converge pretty fast and uh, if you use uh, uh, 23s it'll converge also pretty fast 